Real Talk with Star Scorpio, episode 13. Amazing interview with James, owner of Carib 21 in Toronto. You're going to enjoy it. We have some deep insight of growing up in Jamaica and owning and navigating the restaurant business in COVID times. And um, James is like myself. We like giving back to the community. Shout out to Mathisa. James couldn't do it without you. Stay tuned. Is it peas and rice or rice and peas? Rice and peas. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Real Talk with Star Scorpio. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yes. Good to see you, man. And uh, thanks for being a guest on Real Talk. So, James, I rarely watch the news now, but one morning I turned it on CP24 and I saw you. And I thought um, I'd reach out to you so you could share your story on my podcast. And then I also realized this would be a great opportunity to showcase Black businesses and black business owners in Toronto, the city that I grew up in and love. So now you have a passion for cooking and food. Who taught you how to cook this amazing West Indian food? Well, I, I pretty much taught my, I'm like self, self-taught. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, growing up, you know, in Jamaica, like when you grow up in certain areas, like most um, kids, you have to learn to, to kind of do stuff for yourself. So, so you know, like washing your own clothes, like from age eight mm. and start cooking. So that's, that's how I, I started. Mm. And then I, at like 15 years old, I went into the, the hotel industry, the restaurant okay. industry. So, you know, I started watching what was going on in the kitchen and it grew from there. Okay. So not at home with your mom, the experience, what about that? No, it like, yeah, we used to, we have a thing in Jamaica where they call it like run a boat. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, the summer holidays, like the, the guys will just hang out and cook okay. and cook food, you know? So that's, that's, that's where it started from. Like you're, you know, 10, 11 and we go and like steal some aki and go yeah, buy yeah. some, some flour and just cook some food, you know? So that's where it started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy about that aki um, terminology you used just now. Um, I'm Bayesian Guyanese and in, in Barbados, aki is the, the fruit that you call yeah. guinea, right? You call yeah, it guinea, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. But I heard about Aki and Saltfish in Jamaica. Yeah. How was it growing up on such a beautiful island? Yeah, Jamaica is is a beautiful island, um, but mostly for tourists, right? So it's you know, you know, as most people know, like the struggle, like growing up because where I grew up was pretty much like a slum, you know? So mm -hmm. what part it was it? It wasn't fun growing up there. It was like Kingston eleven, like water house area you know that it's like it's like the music one of the music capital like the music capital of jamaica but like you know i grew up um around the street from like uroy mm -hmm. um you know we're like um super cat and ninja man and those guys that yes. right in that circle okay okay yeah, but, but it, it, it was tough you know it was like you know like bob marley said like concrete jungle that's you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> true know? But um, so before you came to Toronto, I read in your bio, before you came to Toronto, you spent some time in Bermuda. How was that experience? Oh, it was, it was different. It was different. Different, you know, from, you know, growing up in Jamaica to going to Bermuda, where Bermuda is like a different level, like in terms of, you know, like wealth and the, the experience there was, yeah, like a eye-opening experience. So mm -hmm. it, it kind of spark my interest in terms of like you know the world because sometimes you know growing up in jamaica you just you you're in a in a box there but you know like so being in bermuda meeting people from all over the world like sparks sparked my interest in terms of seeing like the world as like my playground you know so yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you remember what age you were when you went uh bermuda i think i was 26 27 okay you're still young yeah some, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, did, what year did you open Carib 21? And um, is there any significance behind the name? Well, Carib 21, um, we are entering our fifth year. Um, so it, it's been like four years, four years, like six months now we've been open. Okay. Yeah. 
And the name, how did you come up with that name? Yeah, so the name now, because, um, you know, the, the idea behind the restaurant, like looking at the landscape in, in Toronto, mm -hmm. like there are a lot of um, restaurants, but there is not really any Caribbean restaurant. Right. Like some of them will say Caribbean, but it's not Caribbean. It's like you have Trinidadian restaurant, you have Jamaican restaurant, you have Guyanese, you know, Bayesian restaurant. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea behind it was to, to kind of, to come up with a concept where I could have like a authentic Caribbean restaurant. Yes. Where you could get, because the, the tagline behind Carib 21 is like, come taste the Caribbean. Okay. Yeah. 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 So somewhere where you could go like and get jerk chicken and macaroni pie at the same place. You know, most places you can't do that, get roti. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was a concept. And if you look at the logo, the logo, it's pretty much like, almost like a, a Caribbean a queen. Yeah. Type on, so it, it's like a reflection of the, the Caribbean coming together. Mm -hmm. And then the, the 21 was like trying to, to make Caribbean cuisine, um, inviting or palatable for, um, you know, immigrants that from not immigrants, but children of immigrants, because mm -hmm. you realize a lot of people from the Caribbean, you know, when they come here and they have kids here, right? kids end up eating McDonald's and pizza and they're not, you know, <laughs> so they're, hey, you, you're calling me up. Hey, Jay, Jay, stop, stop. You're calling <laughs> me up now. I'm first generation Canadian. So, yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> yeah. So the, so the 21 was, was, was like that, like a youthful twist to Caribbean cuisine, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So you're at 2039 Eglinton Avenue West. Um, we live close to there as, as um, kids, my brother and I. Uh, my yeah. parents moved there near Vaughn and Oakwood. What made you choose this location? Well, it was like an easy location. Like, I guess, you know, my wife was passing one day and saw it. Mm -hmm. And we decided to check it out. And it was a location where restaurants were before. So it was very easy to set up there because, um, to set up a restaurant in Toronto mm -hmm. from scratch, you're looking at anywhere from a hundred to like $200,000, like to, you know, in terms of zoning with the city, right. which is a long process. It could take like, it could take like months to get your license, to get passed by the fire department and to, you know, get everything in. So yeah. it's easy, it's easy to set up where like a, a place was already zoned. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's why that location and it's in that area where it's like historic for like, um, Jamaican and Vincentian in that, in that area. Yes. Yes. And, um, now pre COVID pandemic, how is your business? Um, cause you know, I went down to see you. So uh, you mentioned you did a lot of corporate gigs. Tell the people what you used to do um, the majority of the time. Yes. Yeah, so, so in that era, like pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. like we were dealing with the the Eglinton, the construction with the with the, the the subway. Yes. Yes. So businesses, like when I got to that era, businesses were, was already affected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think up until that point, about forty percent of businesses were closed down. Wow. That era. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was a lot mm -hmm. because of the, 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 the constant like construction going on. Yeah. So, so when we got there, like we had, you know, the, a few walk-in. So we decided to, to, to find other ways because we know that before things get back, like after the subway, mm -hmm. then I know that the floodgates will be open and it will be like good for business. But until then we had to pivot and find other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So we went into, um, corporate catering. So we did like, we're connected to a company. So we did like catering for like, um, Bell Canada, Rogers, mm -hmm. um, um, Uber, um, a lot of big, big companies downtown. Mm -hmm. We, you know, like, um, on Bay street, like a lot of the, the, the big fortune 500 companies that normally provide, um, full meal for staff on a daily basis. We, we did stuff with them. Yeah. Downtown Toronto. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, now go on. Yeah. So, so that's where 
that's like was our bread and butter before COVID, but then COVID hit and everything downtown just completely shut down. So yeah. yeah. And yeah, now a lot of people are working from home too, right? I guess yeah, that's the big part of home, it. Yeah. yeah. So um, how has the pandemic now? This is what I want to get into. So you're my first real interview where I get to talk about how pandemic has affected a business such as yours. So how has it affected you like staff, um, hours of operation, or even the shutdown? Because my wife worked at Red Lobster and yeah. she was shut down. So how did that affect you? Well, it, it affected in terms of like the numbers, the numbers went, you know, all the way down. Mm -hmm. um, we were pretty much operating like mostly online. Mm -hmm. And the thing with, with the online, you know, sometimes people don't really know the, the, the dynamic of like ordering food online is yeah. that it takes up anywhere between 25 to 35% of your prof your profit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, restaurants, especially Caribbean restaurants, like operate at a very thin margin. So for a walk-in customer, a 35% could be your profit. So when you give that to, you split that with the online, yeah, you're walking away with almost like 5%, 10%. So, you know, it's very, you know, it's hard mm -hmm. to live on that. So I think most, most restaurant owners that I know, like in terms of in the pandemic, like you, you go from profit mode to just survival mode survival. in terms of I'm going to stay open until after the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, so that's where, that's where we're at. Like staying, staying open. That's the focus, not to make profit, not to just to stay open. Right. And, um, was there help from the government from the, uh, for the small businesses out there for you? Well, I think the government, there's a lot of help out there, but the problem with it is that for small businesses, mm -hmm. because um, the definition of small business is very broad, you know? Okay. So like what happened, like most of our businesses, like as, you know, Caribbean business owners, um, falls in the lower end of small business. It's like more mom and pop. Okay. So mom and pop got squeezed out. So when you look at small business, like when you're looking at 25 to 50 staff mm -hmm. or 25 to a hundred staff as a small business, those businesses were able to benefit from the, the government wage assistant and stuff like that. We weren't able to do that because we fall at the low, the lower end of the spectrum, like a mom and pop. So, mm -hmm. um, and restaurants, because restaurants weren't shut down, then we did not automatically qualify like if you if you had a barber shop mm -hmm. then you'd qualify to to get a certain Ass amount of money because assistance you were yeah. completely shut down yeah okay man <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so this kind of leads to what i'm going to talk about next now so community support is big um and when i went down to see you last week and first by the way james you hooked me up nice but you know <laughs> my daughter and i enjoyed <laughs> some jerk chicken Oh, yeah, but I had you know, some when, when you walked in, I was worried. I was like, man, he's going to order the oxtail poutine because I, I was, I ran out, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ran out. So I, I, I didn't want to disappoint you. So I was happy you, you ordered something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was nice. And I had, I had some leftovers, uh, the other day too, but something I witnessed, um, I witnessed something very special. Uh, a little girl was ordering food and you had a great interaction with her. So am I right in saying you have a great connection with your patrons? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's important. Mm -hmm. Especially, especially, um, young people, because there are, there are a lot of, um, teenagers in that era. Mm -hmm. And because one of the advantage, even though it's not a good advantage being slow, but you get to interact with your customers, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have one on one with them. So like for the past couple of years, I've been able to have like one on one with like some of the young girls and boys in the community mm -hmm. and you know talk about stuff like education and and you know stuff like that because you know i see care 21 as more than just like a, a business we do like community oriented stuff too so yeah and and okay now i want to ask you about this too so 
I'm doing this podcast to share stories of amazing people, of course, and to give back to in the form of donations to um, charities and causes that I believe in. So on your Instagram, um, I seen a post for a fundraiser for a young boy with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So are you on the same kind of mission as me to help others or in a way use your platform to help others um, share their story when they need help? Yeah, yeah, that, that is very important to me because with, with my background, like I came from a background like of a foster, foster care system. Like I was like, you know, adopted at an early age. Oh, okay. Or, or not adopted, but in Jamaica, left in a foster care system. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes my passion is like for like young people mm -hmm. because, you know, there's this notion that if you're a teenager, you're young, it's the best time of your life. You don't, you don't have any reason to be stressed. Right. Yeah. And that, there, that couldn't be further from the truth. Like, you know, young people can be stressed too. So, you know, that is my passion, like, you know, dealing with, with youth mm -hmm. So, like, you know, I use my platform, I use the restaurant and I, you know, try to motivate and to, to reach out to the, the, the youth, the, the community. Right. I like that a lot. I like that yeah. a lot. So do people come by, kids come by and, you know, just say, Hey James, what's going on uh, by the restaurant, even when they don't order food just to talk. Yeah, no, like what, what, what I normally do, like, so when teenagers come by, like, and I'm serving them, we interact, we talk about education, mm -hmm. you know, that, that is one of the main thing I, I, I try to do education because I know the power and the importance of education, especially in a city like Toronto, mm -hmm. you know, so for example, there's a, a young girl that um, comes to the shop pretty often. Okay. And we talk about education and she was talking about going into nursing and stuff like that. And I asked her why, and she was saying that her teacher was saying that, you know, this would be, and I said, no, mm -hmm. no, I said, no, like, don't let your teacher tell you what to be like, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the level of education that you need to be a nurse it's pretty much the same level of education you could use to, to go be a doctor. Doctor, right? yep. So mm -hmm. go for, go be a doctor, you know, and, and I educated her about the, the history of, you know, Canada and how up until even the eighties, it was still on the books in Canada that blacks are not allowed to go to medical school. So I mm -hmm. had to educate her about stuff like that and say, you know, so like I try to use my space to, to, to do stuff like that because the thing is, like, as a, you know, black person living in the city, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you probably go through this too, like you turn on the TV and you hear like a shooting and you're like, please don't let it be another black guy, you know, because yeah. it just seemed like that's where our thing is. So you try to, you know, to do our part in terms of being proactive and not being reactive in terms of police programs and, and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. would like to hear it got to give back to the community and help the yeah. young yeah because i'm in i'm at that age now i'm 48 where i feel like it's time for me to help the youth to help good causes and just give back because i've been blessed in my life you know what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. so that leads me to what i seen on your instagram too tell me about gratitude mondays because i seen a couple posts that you posted i guess on a monday um, yeah. And it's just about gratitude, I, I guess, giving thanks to certain things. Let me know about that. Hey guys, welcome to another Gratitude Monday. This week, I'm going to keep it short and simple. What I'm most grateful for this week is that CARB 21 is still open. Since March 2020, over 15,000 restaurants have closed their doors in Canada. And the fact that CARB 21 is still open, it's really a blessing to us. And we know that a lot of small businesses are struggling throughout 2020, 2021. And I believe that if we can only stay open and survive this COVID-19, that great things are ahead of us. Yeah, so what, what I was trying to do with that is that, you know, especially during, during the pandemic, because if you realize during the pandemic, like, you know, we see in, in the black community, we start to take mental health and stuff like that a bit more serious because like, 
you know like in in like in in Jamaica culture like there's nothing like to do with mental health if you're if something is wrong like we have a term where they say like you know like somebody obey you or you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like witchcraft everything is witchcraft there's no mental health so yeah yeah so we we start seeing more emphasis on on that and even with myself like i realized during the pandemic going through like a lot of um issues like in in terms of like almost getting depressed because like mm-hmm. because before before the pandemic hit like the, the pandemic hit in in march yes and carb 21 was on a trajectory like to just like skyrocket in terms of business wow we're right there mm-hmm. you know when you when you put stuff together and you're working towards a goal and you're right there mm-hmm. and then the pandemic just hit and just everything was just gone so like it, it put me in that space and i had to be in a space where i have to be intentional about my mental health you know mm-hmm. coming into to run a business where i know i'm running a business but i'm not making any money mm-hmm. i'm working 12 hour days but i'm not making any money so you know so that's where it came from like just thinking about the the, the things the little things to be grateful for that okay at least the, the business is still open you know at least i haven't lost any loved one during covid just little stuff like that and to encourage people to to be grateful for whatever little i like that and um you have to have support so what, who is in your support system that helps you get by because for me it's my wife my daughter and of course my my immediate family when i used to get down man suffer from depression anxiety but if, if they weren't there for me, I don't know, man, what I would do. So who was, who's your support system? Well, my, my wife is, is, you know, my biggest support system. Like she would always find the right words mm-hmm. to, to say, like, you know, when everything looks dark and gloomy um, and just like, you know, my kids also, mm-hmm. and, you know, like surrounded myself with, with, with positive people. people. Yep. Yeah. So that's, I, I'm, was very intentional in that too, like trying to to shed like people that that's not adding value to my life. So yes. you know, and just to find you know what I what I did too during the pandemic, like comedy was something that that helped me out a lot too. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, when I'm cooking, cause I get there, and I'm there by myself. So like, I'm working, but that's like my my me time, right? Mm-hmm. And while I'm working, like I would just turn on my loudspeaker and I'd be listening to like some Dave Chappelle and some, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it helps, you know, like the idea that laughter is medicine, like it's, it's a real thing, you know, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. Yo, speaking of, um, famous people, anyone walk into your, uh, into a curb 21 where you're like, Oh, you were shocked or surprised. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Not yet. Hopefully soon, but not yet. Okay. Okay. So, um, I, I got, I got one last question for you here, James. Is it peas and rice or rice and peas? Rice and peas. <laughs> <laughs> rice and peas. Uh, all right. All right. Um, let the people know where they could find you. I know we said the address, but say the address again and let them know your IG or Facebook. Um, where can people find you? Okay, so it's it's 2039 Eglinton Avenue West. And you know, I know a lot of people have been avoiding Eglinton. <laughs> you know, even even this week I went on the side street mm-hmm. and I was laughing because the side street was like jam-packed with traffic. Yeah. And when you go on to Eglinton, Eglinton is like smooth sailing. So yeah, it's 2039 Eglinton Avenue West. And Eglinton is is open for business. Mm-hmm. Um it's not as bad as it used to be. There are a few spots where you'll still um, encounter construction, but anywhere from Keel to like Allen, mm-hmm. right there, it's, it's, it's smooth sailing. Um, we're on Carib 21 on IG. We do most of our stuff on IG. Mm-hmm. Um, you can order food straight. There's a, there's a button at the top of the IG where you can just click the button and it takes you straight um, to the menu and you can just order and, and get it delivered right away. So nice and yeah i just want to ask you too about that who who's the tech savvy person your wife or you uh because when 
all these features came in, you know, the Uber Eats and the DoorDash and all these things, and you can order online. Who's that person that controls the the functions yeah, she, of IG yeah, and then Yeah, she's a she's a tech savvy person, yeah. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm looking into it, but she's yeah, she's the one. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, James, you know I'm doing this for charity, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna show you three balloons. You're gonna tell me which one to pop, and then I'll know who I'm donating to. So it's either Cancer Society, ALS, or Alzheimer's. All right, James. <laughs> I got three balloons in my hand. And uh, you tell me when, which one you want me to pop. They're all the same color. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the one, the, the, the single one in your hand. The one, yeah. One? That one. So the 13th charity Star Scorpio was donating to is... There we go. That looks like Alzheimer's Society, yes. yeah? Yes. Nice. All right, James. Thank you for coming out. This is Thank the 13th yes, episode of Real Talk with Star Scorpio in the books. And we out. Thank you.